Thanks, Larry. Great. Another uh, great day for gardening. We've been blessed with the weather. Thank God. Maybe you might just explain a little bit more about Tully's Nurseries and what you do there, because it's quite an operation, isn't it? Yeah, we've um, it's in business. We're in business about forty years now. Um, Dad set it up uh, primarily um, for his landscaping business, and then it developed into a nursery and cash and curry, um, and then the export business. Um, so we grow up to about a million plants per annum and we've quite a diverse, diverse um, market and um, we supply garden centres, landscape contractors and um, DIYs and we also export to the UK. So we, uh, this is kind of, um, we're really proud of the export side because we're exporting our hebes that we breed that dad um, started breeding 20 years ago. So. So, so Neve, I remember visiting your nursery probably when you were kind of knee high, you know, <laughs> and, and therefore obviously you've been, you've been around a long time. And, it, and it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because you've got a lot of personal experience of growing up in the industry. Like we hear more and more now, there's more recognition of the, the physical and the psychological health benefits yeah. associated with gardening. Um, and yeah. there's more research coming. I see more stuff coming out, even just in recent weeks from Exeter and the RHS really going on about yeah. how, now, we all understand now that the garden is such a great place to be for both the mind and the body. But you have that personal experience. What what, what was it like for you growing up in the industry? Do you see the joys and benefits yeah, of yeah. just hard work? Uh, no, a bit of both, actually. But I love what I do. There's such passion in the industry. You spoke about uh, growing up. So I guess... Um, uh, Years ago, we this, there's a whole lot of pine trees across the road from the house and we couldn't get the TV signal. <laughs> so we didn't watch TV much. We were always outside. But I always remember dad traveling and people coming into our house, having cups of tea and biscuits and the stories. And I was just so intrigued about what they did. And a lot of them had their own business and I loved, admired their work ethic. Um, and dad with his stories and his jokes you know so for me I guess in the summer I always got the worst jobs <laughs> growing up like weeding gorse or carrying around a hose when we didn't have an automatic watering system but I suppose um, for me it made me appreciate plants and what it took to look after plants getting the fresh air so we've I've always been active and um, I've always felt the benefits and I think now we're doing kind of like a full circle. We've gone from that to something very structured and everything's systematic now. We're all seeing um, this relaxation, this calmness and this peacefulness come back into our lives um, where we've more time to think and to get out there and to just see and appreciate nature and the natural plants we have around us that we took for granted before, you know. I know you have a nine-year-old, um, Harvey, isn't it? Yeah, Harvey, yeah. What are you doing with him? How are you passing on your passion and your knowledge to him? How are you getting him interested? I had some perennials I hadn't trimmed back. So I said, come on outside to the garden and we'll trim the perennials. So I have a whole um, lovely kind of border of arisen and both no wallflowers. Neve, I know, I know you didn't always stick with the horticulture. You spent a long time looking, looking at marketing and then brought that back to the business. And you look very closely at the trends and what people are looking for and you try to bring that into the business in terms of the range of plants and the labeling and, and the messaging what, what what sort of things what advice would you give to people in terms of looking at plants and how you can use plants in different ways yeah okay so in um in college i developed a love for marketing so while we had the product in the nursery we probably weren't very good at marketing it we might have had some sales techniques but we really didn't we weren't good at presenting it very well and um, so what Bella Bloom and Winning Plants, both brands were born and um, Winning Plants first of all in 2002 and then Bella Bloom in 2012. So basically there are labels that clip into the pot. And for us then it was an easy way to get the message across. And even those labels have developed over the years. So there's a huge focus now, as you said earlier, on the benefits of gardening and that gardening is good for you, but also 
for example, lavenders, the scent of a lavender is relaxing. There's some plants, you know, like statues, lamb's ears that children can touch and it's really good for them. There's bold colours. Um, there's plant cut flowers, which is an interesting one. And I think that's, I see that for the future, you know. You can plant alstroemeria in your garden and you can just pull them then like rhubarb and they'll keep coming back. And I did that actually last year myself. Um, and I felt great satisfaction that I had a little patch and I was able to pull it and then they came again. You know, there is some satisfaction about growing your own. You feel a pride, you know, in doing it. Well, um, and I, so, no, I, I think that's really important, Eve, because sometimes people like yourself and myself in the industry, we're, we're aware of, of all the different things you can do with certain plants. But it's probably important that we actually call that out to people and, and show that on the label. You can use a plant in so many different ways. In so many different ways, um, I, I actually, um, even violas, the flowers, you can put them in your gin and tonic or your cocktails. So plants are also edible. So there's lots of benefits of plants and we are demystifying the whole, you know, the Latin jargon and trying to get it across to people that gardening is easy. It's easier than they think. And I think if they just start and give it a go, whether it's a plant a container of you have an apartment or you have a little plot and you just do a little perennial border, um, there is something for everybody. And there's so much knowledge out there in the garden centres. I mean, you know, don't be afraid to ask. Neve, when you're looking at, at the trends and you're studying what's happening and the changes out there, and this is, of course, is a, a very interesting, different time that we're in at the moment. What are you seeing is happening in the online space? Um, I see more and more people are having online shops. We have one ourselves and even we've just launched one for garden centres to make it easier for them to buy from us. Um, also, I love the activity on social media and um, garden centres promoting the products they have and putting that kind of personal touch. So I, I think even though it's maybe on social media or on screen and it's not face to face, you still see the person and it, there's warmth in it. You know, there's okay. great businesses out there. And I think that's okay. uh, where it's going for the future. I think we'll end on that, Lee. Thank you for that. Great, great, great talking to you. Good, good, good to see you look, looking so well. And um, next week we'll be back and we're going to have uh, Owen Reed from Fernhill Garden Centre in the Midlands. So we're looking forward to that as well. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.